My calculations are right. What took me all day to do, you guys probably saw in about 30 to 45 seconds. And tomorrow, I will spend the day trying to get all of this mess cleaned up so we can get both these frames in here and start swapping parts. so I spared you the little video part about pressure washing this frame so I hope you appreciate that let's look let's look this thing over real quick as you can see it was four-wheel drive and I have no desire for it to be a four-wheel drive vehicle anymore um, what I was telling you about all the room I have from this steering linkage back will be wide open after I get that axle out of there and throw it in the garbage this frame is boxed also it's boxed in, which gives it more rigidity so that when we're uh, making big pulls, if you will, it won't twist the frame and the wheels will hold the ground better. I need to remove this bumper. This fuel tank is not going to work for my application as previously thought. And again, a lot of trial and error here. My first boosted Ranger build. Let's get some of this crap off of this frame so we can get it next to the other one and see what we got to do to make it work. I've never blew up any gasoline before in my life. I'm thinking, but this thing is full. I mean, full of gas. But I'm thinking about maybe just, maybe we should blow it up. Because I've never done this before, let's start out with just a five gallon pail of gasoline because I'm a chicken. Hey guys, I'm Uncle Rob, and um, I gotta pour some gasoline out here first. I have to pour some gasoline out here on a, in a trail like of gas to a five gallon pail. Next, I'm gonna light a piece of paper up. Next, I'm gonna light the ground on fire and see if this blows up. Um, burning the field up. Oh, there she goes. Yeah, now drink beer and listen to Skinner like a real man. All right guys, so I have to admit you know, there's a lot of shame that goes with not being able to blow up a five gallon can of gasoline. But anyways, we need to get back to work. I'm not gonna do any more today because the grass is too dry out there. Maybe if it's raining tomorrow, we'll try again. But now I understand why Uncle Rob gets so many views and I don't.
Gonna try and free up these calipers a little bit so it'll roll around the shop a little easier. I think it's this mud that's getting them to lock up. I believe I'll just remove this caliper off of this one. We don't need it hooked up right now anyways. We'll just toss her aside for now. Nice. If you will look over here to the east end of the garage, there is the frame. And that's as clean as we're getting it right now. Nobody needs to panic in any way because we'll be doing more to it later. But we first need to get it all together and running. If you look to the north side of the garage, there is the Ford Ranger. Still on the frame. And I need to get the cab off of it. In an attempt to engage my viewers more and become more interactive with you folks, especially subscribers, I am going to offer you this beautiful, authentic Kentucky license plate. And no, this is not a joke. Let me explain. If you've always been interested in having an authentic Kentucky license plate, now's your opportunity. All you have to do is comment below and leave a like, and I'll go through them all, guys, put them in a bag or something and pick your name out and I will sign this beautiful license plate and ship it to you free of charge. You always see interesting things when you tear a vehicle down like this and this one has a C-clamp on it right there holding the ground wire for the trailer lights and that C-clamp you could tell has been there for a long time. So that's pretty cool. It served its purpose all these years I'm sure. And if you'll come over here, and I'm not making this up, but I am reenacting it, you will see a socket there. And that's exactly where it was sitting when I found it, and it is a 10 millimeter socket, which is funny because they make so many jokes about that on Facebook and stuff. All right, guys, so it's raining outside. That's what you're hearing. It's always raining outside in Kentucky. It's always raining when I'm filming video and trying to make clear audio for you folks, I'll just make it quick for you. I want to show you where we're at. And here is where we're at. Both of these frames are stripped down, sitting next to each other, because I am ready now to start mounting new mounts on the S10 frame, which is over here, so that this uh, Ford Ranger body up here, as you know, will fit on it nicely. It's just amazing to me how close these two frames are to each other as far as the wheelbase goes. And they are different shape and they're all both kind of wonky in their own way. So I need to come up with a real good and accurate way to measure everything on these two frames to make sure I put the mounts in the exact spot that they belong. So I've got some thoughts rattling around in my little head on how I want to take accurate measurements of this. It's Saturday morning and I'm going to take this weekend to reflect on this, think about it, and we'll start fresh Monday. We'll see you next time, guys.